take to water only when they're looking for a drink. But dipping in kiddie pools is just one of the things that make Kanzi and Malika's lives a little different. What may seem like child's play is actually part of a unique project taking place at Georgia State University's Language Research Center. Here in a 55-acre forest outside Atlanta, Kanzi and Malika live much like wild chimpanzees while learning to communicate with people. Chimpanzees can't speak. So project director Dr. Sue Savage Rumbaugh has provided them with an alternative. Geometric symbols called lexigrams stand for words that chimps want to use. To talk, all they have to do is point. Keyboard conversation can be clumsy, but the more portable alternative, sign language, presents different problems. One of the most significant disadvantages about sign language is that the signs can often become indistinct or blurred because of the shape of the chimpanzee's hand. Uh, for example, the signs food, flower, and drink, when made with a human hand and made very distinctly and deliberately, can appear very different. But when these signs are made by a chimpanzee, they often all look like that. And it's very difficult to interpret. Ten years ago, Sue taught two chimpanzees, Sherman and Austin, to use lexigrams, not just to communicate with people, but with each other. Sherman could ask Austin for a favorite food and get it, mastering basic communication. found that the common chimps couldn't learn language like children just by listening to it. They could be taught lexigrams, but drew a blank at English. Even meaningful glances failed to help. And then Kanzi walked into Sue's life. After 13 years of working with common chimps, she never dreamed her work would take the leaps it has with Kanzi. Where Sherman and Austin struggled to learn lexigrams, Kanzi picked them up just by watching others use them. What would you like? Kanzi wants bananas. And what else, Kanzi? You think you ought to get tomatoes? You think tomatoes are good? Pygmy chimpanzees weren't recognized as a separate species until the 1930s. Robert Yerkes, founder of the Yerkes Primate Center, suspected that in addition to being physically distinct, the pygmies were more intelligent than their common cousins. But he couldn't prove it. Today, pygmy chimps survive in the wild only in the rainforests of Zaire. But logging rights to this land have been sold, and the chimpanzee's future is threatened. Sue's work with Kanzi has taken on greater significance. Okay, now I'm going to put it in here so you can pat it. There. Pygmies proved easier and friendlier to work with than their common cousins. But more important was the ease with which Kanzi used the symbols. Sensing that she was on the verge of a breakthrough, Sue held her enthusiasm in check with tests designed to verify what Kanzi could do. Turtle. Do you see the turtle? That's right. That was a turtle. Real Lexigrams nice. came easily, but Kanzi's real achievement was his understanding of the coke? spoken word. Can you find coke? Do you see coke? That's right. Real nice. Kanzi found the coke. His comprehension was astounding. He easily translated Sue's words into lexigrams. Here. We're looking for carrots. Can you find carrots? That's right, that's the carrots. The question remained whether or not Kanzi was a genius chimp or simply represented his species. At two and a half, his younger sister, Monika, leaves no doubt. Can you show me the blackberries? Yes, that's right. This is the pitch blackberries, isn't it? Oh, they look so good. When it became clear that the chimpanzees understood English, Sue added mechanical speech to the keyboard to give them a voice of their own. Here's one, right there. With the addition of speech to the keyboard, the system can give language not only to chimpanzees, but to some special people, like Sandra. Sandra, what did you want to ask me for? 
Did you want to ask me for something? Soda. Oh, some of that. Uh. Sandra can't speak or learn sign language. In a separate research project at the center, Sandra has learned lexigrams, which allow her to name the objects in her world. A severely retarded young woman who once would fling over chairs in frustration. Lexigrams have given her, at 23, a hard-won independence. Like Itcher, Sue learns from her students. Understanding their language is another part of her job. Can you make some sounds? Sounds she makes when she's very, very excited or upset. And she, she takes that as my, my being a little upset, so she comes down to comfort me, and we would usually do the same thing when, when she would make such a sound, only she would probably make it much louder. Sound she makes when she wants something that we have, like... And sound she makes to tell uh, mommy that we're coming back in from the woods in the evening and we've brought some food for mommy. <laughs> and a variety of other sounds that I think are beautiful. But the matter at hand is teaching them our language. Sue works hard to keep her students alert, 